Welcome to the April 6th, 2021 episode of Reactive Consciousness, the in-depth podcast about what happened this week in our lives. I am your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And some schmuck. Welcome. Yeah, who this is, is this guy? Oh! <laughs> we offered him a, 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 Demi's, a, a Denny's Grand Slam, and he, he followed us. He followed us home. <laughs> Joke's That's on you, I don't even know where my closest Denny's is. <laughs> Near do I. <laughs> You know that I do anything for when I'm famished. You shouldn't be exploiting people like that. <laughs> Moons over Miami. <laughs> I, I got I got thinking of pork products since you were telling me about your your Easter ham that you had had. <laughs> Easter ham or Easter ham is almost like pulled pork. Like it's yeah. basically ham just cooked for a long time. Pulled pork Ooh, is delicious. Awesome. I love pulled pork. Yeah. Um, I think we, if, if, I think if we cooked it a little bit more, I think we could do that with pork with it. But anyway, yeah, we had a uh, we had turkey uh, and uh, filet mignon, and uh, and then we had to go to another family, uh, another half of the family, and then mm. we have we have uh, spare rib. Generally, in Hungary, when you have like uh, Eastern dinner, is mostly just ham, cooked egg, ham, sweet ham bread. Ham is pretty uh, pretty prevalent. And and lamb is pretty prevalent for for Easter. Um, yep. Anyway, we should get going because we do have a lot to talk about. Um, so, uh, probably the biggest news item, um, which I I barely got to, uh, because like I, it's so far out of what we usually cover and play. Uh, but uh, Outriders is like the new, almost Destiny like. A game shooter, shooter. launched by um, Square Enix uh, that apparently uh, launched very poorly. Uh, the, it, they could not handle the load. Yeah, um, server issues, and it's like required online to play, which is great when you're doing a solo game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's uh, a lot of people are attributing uh, uh, the the fact that it's a Game Pass game. Um, so basically, anybody who has Xbox Live. Uh, game or Game Pass uh, has it, and a lot of people who have Xbox obviously have Game Pass because that's one of the huge benefits of being a, an Xbox player. So, um, which is really great for their engagement. You know, they have lots uh, a huge player base that could be like you know making microtransactions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But they were not prepared for the load, um, and uh, that that's a big shame. And especially with a game like this, uh, that could like make or break you like. Launch, um, and people yeah. are pretty furious over it. I mean, they're they're also doing stupid stuff like you know um, harassing the devs and, and all kinds of stuff like that, which is never a good thing. Uh, yeah, I can well, tell you. again, I'm feeling like that this is this happens like in Bad Bulletstorm that they shackled a bunch of Polish Polish developers to the, the sellers and said make a game. Yeah, and every kind of like uh, business arrangement and like something necess- necessities to run this game are. Second, were secondary, tertiary at best. Yeah. And then when it like the game is out, oh, let's take this multiplayer, massive multiplayer part on it. Honestly, I didn't see much about it. It, but it looked like sort of this aggressive cover-based shoot, shooting game where you like it's a looter shooter. You get parts, you get like equipment, you get new like increasingly more shinier weapons. And occasionally you have a cooldown spell to easy, to break the break the combat flow, of basically. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I don't have any experience with it. It seems like people do like it um, once once they've played it uh, quite a bit. Like um, uh, one of the more prevalent YouTubers for uh, first person shooters, who's usually pretty fair, but he's also critical. Um, G Man lives. I don't know if you guys know. Uh, uh, G G Man lives. Yeah, yeah, we know about this. 
uh, I, I usually like his content, and I usually like his takes <sighs> on things. Um, but uh, I, I, he was saying that he hated the, the game at first, and now he, he, after 10 hours, he actually really enjoys it. Uh, so Stockholm Syndrome kicked, kicked, kicked in. <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> just like with any Same type up. of game like this, it a, a lot of it's just like you know the grind and you know uh, you know the well yeah the the <laughs> look, the look. chain of events that you need to do to get to each I level. I know up. people who play Destiny and they, they have this love hate relationship with the game. And I was yeah. keep asking them, what would you think it would happen if you would would Take Destiny and replace every combat mechanic with do- that of Doom and Doom Eternal. <laughs> well, the thing is with games like this is that they're they're incredibly big and there aren't many of them, and so like to scratch your itch, there's really no- nothing. There was nothing like Destiny. Um, you know, they're like an MMO uh, uh, first person shooter that was really good. Uh, like well, first person shooter mechanics. wasn't, but well, there is a game that has been juggernauting this style for. A couple of years by now, and it's called Warframe. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's been well, around. I, I don't, I don't know about, much about Warframe, but um, I don't know much except much that less. no matter what your power suit looks like, like it just looks fucking sweet. It's like Monster Hunter. Like even yeah. the the least impressive the armor still stuff. looks cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the armor designs are fucking gorgeous, and like I have on a different Discord channel, I have like several people who are constantly posting and like. It is splendorous how the the the, the yeah. designs look. Yeah. Um. Whenever I think of Warframe, I I, I, I hear Warframe. I, I think of that War Wing or whatever game for like PlayStation One. Uh, what, what was that called? No, uh, that, that I don't know. War uh, it was like a, a PS One launch game. What's that? Wargasm. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um. Yeah, I, I always think of that. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's 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 one of those uh, those things where I, I always you know screw it up with something else I know. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, I you know I, I I guess you know also with a game like this that is constantly online, uh, it does have some time to redeem itself, uh, but. It would be best if things launched well, right? I mean, like, and gave it a good reputation, <sighs> you know. It, um, nowadays, I think every every AAA game that is think that aims for something big and groundbreaking will be starting up, starting out as like as a protozoa and have to evolve itself into something playable. Same yeah. was with Skyrim. Same was with Fallout sixty seven. Or seventy six. Well, yeah, Todd. What's his name? Todd, Todd Phillips 76. or Todd Howard? Todd Phillips is the director, right? It's Todd Howard. He just worked. Yeah, like he he actually had uh, like an interview quote that said something like, "It's not what the game is at launch; it's what it becomes," which is incredibly shitty. Like I, I know that games evolve over time, like especially MMOs, where now it's even grander, but it's supposed to fucking work when it first comes out. Yeah. So, but uh, for Cyberpunk, it, but that was also that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, um, mess up. So. We, we we actually have news on that too as well. Um, uh, I I, uh, I I was going to reveal a little bit later, but we might as well. CD Projekt Red has revealed that they're probably going to nix uh, the multiplayer component of Cyberpunk. Yeah, I didn't um, even know that it was going to have it until I heard that they were going to nix it, and my immediate thought was like, "Oh, thank God! If you can't get the fucking yeah. single player to work." <laughs> Yeah, exactly, and they're they're probably also, uh, you know, working on on just trying to uh, get this to work correctly, and also, you know, all the fallout from from it not working at the beginning and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I I think that that is the right move. I mean, they, they shouldn't be wasting time on 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 a feature that barely anybody wants. Yeah, like yeah. fix the game so it runs properly first. Then we, I think, then like. Make friends with modders. They will help bring you a long way. I think if I meant the bet has the tele- developers, <sighs> if they wouldn't be so greedy bastards, would it like, well, it wasn't not even the developers, but the the bet has the is it mod store. Yeah, yeah. Was, I don't know what was it called. Knows that you can you can do a lot with mods. Yeah, I I I just uh... you just have to treat you just have to treat the modders well. Yeah, I I. 
I, I think really what happened there is it just needed more time in the oven. Mm. Uh, honestly. So, I, I don't know. Um, but we can move on. I, I did want to uh, um, move on here and, and talk about... Um, we missed this last week, but I, I thought that this was a, a pretty awesome thing and something that's pretty unexpected when you think of, like, uh, the, um, when, when you think of, uh, you know, best publisher, uh, you, you, you don't, you often don't think of this kind of thing, but, uh, Sega actually got publisher of the year last year. And especially considering that they've only really kind of gotten into a, a renaissance, like fairly recently, maybe in the last five years. Yeah. They're just, um, their super combo of Yakuza persona and per, uh, fantasy star online too. And some interesting Sonic games. Like they've just been killing it lately. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think really the persona and uh, Yakuza stuff really, really helped them last year and um, they deserve it. I mean, they're good. They're, they're putting out great products that are selling. Really well. Um, I, mm -hmm. I can't they think of a game them. that I liked better than uh, like a dragon. Um, on, uh, quite honestly, I really love that game. I, I think it's really, really awesome, and um, I'm really, fun. really happy about, uh, that they are doing well because Sega's my like my first love uh, in terms of a video game company. I, I absolutely love Sega. Um, they and even during their their like they had just a, a terrible time during the 360 era, <laughs> 360 PS3 era. They would they would. Put out like little glimmers of of fun stuff. Like you you, you get like Bayonetta and uh, and uh, you know a Vanquish, but you you also have like they would barely you know put out a Yakuza game like in in the United States. It would it would be such a struggle to get them to even recognize. Uh, it yeah, game. I think there was a moment where they they were kind of a rock star with Sonic the Hedgehog, and then they wanted to kind of relive that Rockstar moment with Sonic the Hedgehog, and it kind of didn't work. Yeah, that yeah, was, the, I mean, that was the era of Sonic 06. Yeah, yeah. Like the th like I said, 360 PS3 era is their worst era uh, by far. I mean, like, Yakuza yeah, 4 and 5 are some of the better games in the series, but nobody really knew about or cared about Yakuza on the West at the time, and 3 was censored to hell, 4 was, like what a comeback if you had heard of Yakuza and cared about it at all. And 5 got a little bit of notoriety because it was digital only, so it's like, oh, what's this weird game? But I, th I think it was really, like, Yakuza 6 that helped put the th put the yeah. series on the map in the West. And Judgment and, 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 and Like a Dragon all in a row uh, have been, like, so good. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you had to be zero. aware... You, you had to be, a, like, aware of Yakuza if you wanted to, like, care about judgment because like that no one really marketed that game very well i, I think yakuza zero was even more popular than six. yeah zero helped a six. whole lot yeah uh, i think zero is the big one honestly i i think that was the turning point uh yeah and that was also audiences. good because it was an effective starting point because it's the chronological starting point <laughs> and it also has a has that 80s 80s nostalgia is hard to ignore it's it's fun um mm -hmm. and so oh, oh by the way uh uh, the game I was thinking of was Warhawk uh, for oh, PS1, Warhawk. if you remember Warhawk. that. But uh, anyway, mm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I got it to hand it to Sega. I mean, they they even beat out like you know Juggernauts, like you know, uh, like yeah, Square Enix and and Bethesda and other companies like that that were releasing like good stuff. I mean, like you know, you had Doom Eternal last year. I mean, they're, they're, there's nothing. Uh, there's uh, Nintendo was a big publisher I... last year. I mean, Animal Crossing was a huge game. Uh, last year, yeah, so. but I think like ID is not a publisher; it's a develop, it's strictly a developer team. Well, yeah, and but Bethesda game. has has other good good releases too. I mean, they they, they have the you know the are the there games. are there really? Yeah, yeah like that. That's games. the whole thing. Bethesda <laughs> got a lot of flack for releasing utter broken garbage, so they're not winning publisher of the year that year. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know Bethesda's but, famous, but. The most recent thing they did was crap, and Doom Eternal. You think it, and think not Bethesda. <laughs> yeah, but but what I'm saying is like Sega beat like all of these big names out, and they're kind of to me they're kind of the scrappy company, even though they've been around forever. It, yeah. Because like they 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 always like seem to get beat up. You know what I mean? Like they they they're always just 
making it. You know what I mean? Um, so, like, it, it's kind of like SNK's, like, that scrappy company, too. Uh, even more so. Um, like, that, 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 that company that somehow has, has not gotten, has gotten through all the bankruptcies. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, all, and, they and are, still survived like... and is still putting out good stuff. They are, they are the Lancer to Nintendo, Nintendo's hero. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Nintendo is uh, is obviously the perennial favorite. They they always uh, they almost always like their big games are almost always really really good. And don't disappoint. Mm. But, Except uh, if you're a PC PC player like I am. Well, <laughs> yeah, then you lose like even... everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't even have a uh, a shot at playing them, but. Uh... Yeah, I, I just wanted to give kudos to them, um, but yeah, what, what what we think may, may be, hopefully, the last and final uh, installment of the Binding of Isaac. Yeah, this is the actual uh, biggest news story of this week. No, um, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but Isaac Repentance is finally out, and uh, it's it's a it's a reasonably big expansion. Let's put it this way. <laughs> I am one of the Reasonably, people who actually would... platinumed by Isaac Afterbirth Plus, right? So yeah. when you go onto the Steam page uh, of the game, it shows you the amount of trophies you have out of the maximum, and it gives you a percentage. Uh, suddenly, I have uh, 64% of the trophies <laughs> in the game. <laughs> Only 64 with all the work you did? They you added like have... 200 trophies. It's like Jesus. 600 some now. <laughs> Why? Yeah, there's a lot and, going on. Fun. And this is a reminder that, like, with Binding of Isaac, like, the the trophies are the game. It, yeah. It, like, that's the reason why you play the game. It's not, like, like only, like, defeating the levels or the, the runs is or, is only, like, yeah, a small part be- of it. Beating Mom is, like, nothing. it's not even a run anymore. Yeah. Like, why are you only doing this? Because in original Isaac, there was the basement. There's two levels of that. Then there's the caves, two levels. Then there's the necropolis or whatever the hell it was called. That might be the alternate version, but whatever. And there's two of those, and that's mom. Depth, but I one, think once, was the original. What was it? Depths. The depths, excuse me. Yes, that's right. So then there's yeah. two levels of the depths. Uh, and then once I can't you can't even make it to mom. <laughs> yeah, <time>. well, <laughs> you, you got a ways to go. So after you beat mom, um, more of the map unlocks, and you can unlock two levels past that, which is the womb, and then you fight the true final boss. But oh wait, then you can unlock from there. Uh, like you can grab uh, like one of two photos in mom's fight, which once you beat the womb, you can go to a heaven level or a hell level. The cathedral, fight a boss there, or Shale, fight a boss there. Those are the true variations of the final boss now. Oh, actually, no, I'm kidding. Because uh, from from those places, from from the cathedral, you could go into the chest, and from Shale, you can go into the the dark, the dark room. room. Yeah, because like a photo of the negative room. Those are the true final bosses. Oh wait, actually, no. Uh, they added uh, a, a boss called Mega Satan to the game. And if you get P- two keys across your entire run, then you can unlock a secret l- entrance to his lair. That are random, right? The, the, it's random whether no, you have somewhat to get random, you but have there's to... a way you could fudge it. Uh, what were you, you saying, have to get to angel You have to get to angel deals and destroy the angel statues. Yes, uh, that's the random part. Or you could keep hurting yourself in a sacrifice room to force the fight, but that's very risky because you keep hurting yourself. Uh, that's the true final boss. Oh, wait, actually, no. Uh, in the womb level, you can choose to enter an alternate exit and go into a level where you fight a new boss called Hush. That's the true final boss. Oh, wait, no, uh, actually, if you beat Hush, you could unlock another area. I forgot what it's called. Uh, where you could unlock the super duper true final boss, Delirium. And that was actually the super duper final boss for Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus. Repentance uh, has altered that. Uh, now we have shenanigans, because after you beat the very first level, there's an alternate <laughs> side door off of the boss exit, which, if you have a key, you can open it to fight, or to enter, like, an alternate level called Downpour, and I'm not gonna go into the details for this one yet, because light spoilers, but from the Downpour level, once you complete the two of those, you can pop back to normal, but you can also, um, from there, or from the overworld, uh, like, the caves access a different 
alternate set of levels called the mines, and from the depths you can access a different alternate set of levels called the mausoleum. So to go into downpour you need a key, to go into the mines you need two bombs, to enter the mausoleum you need to get hurt twice. Uh, and then, if you manage to beat the mausoleum, there's a branching path off of that <laughs> boss fight where I'm not going to spoil how to enter it. I figured out how because I looked it up, so I didn't figure it out, I cheated. But if you solve some puzzles in Downpour in the Mines, Sounds then like you. you can uh, then you can open up the super last level where there's a super last boss. At least I think that's the super last boss. But but there's basically an alternate set of levels for the entire game now. Ugh, that, that's oh, like God. a huge update. It's like my like innocent gigantic. child, you just barely scratched the surface. I you know, well, I have. I've only been playing it for right? like two hours. I, I have barely scratched the surface. There's fucking two hundred achievements. I gotta look up how to get these things. <laughs> and and you have to like beat it with all the different characters and stuff. Yes, right? yeah. yes, Dif yes. Different, uh... That said, they buffed a lot of like weekend weak stuff. Like for example, the keeper now ha has more viable uh, combat capabilities. Sure. And, uh, for example, the lost holy mantle has been mo made more well, not stronger, but when you get hit, you no longer just blink. Like you, there is a very distincting visual effect for it, so you know when you lost it. Oh, okay, it's more just okay, okay. Uh, is that like the what is that like the the star well, man kind of the, thing? The lost is the little ghost looking dude that immediately dies when he's hit. But if you complete okay. certain requirements with him, you can get what's called the holy mantle. Which is a, a power up that anybody could find, but it's incredibly rare. But the lost, you can make it so the lost starts with it permanently. And the holy mantle is, uh, it's one free hit per room. So the lost can get oh, okay. hit once, clear a room, and when he enters the next room, the holy mantle is restored. So like, it makes the lost actually a playable character. <laughs> That's pretty so cool. So basically, you're playing to Toho on even when you're playing the lost. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, now, now I'm glad that I never got it. Oh, also they added <laughs> proper multiplayer. Oh yeah, I never did touch Isaac like multiplayer like ever. I Not didn't know that was, was a mod. thing. I didn't. The, that, know that. Isaac, the original Isaac multiplayer was just that you could summon in little like yeah, the buddies. You know, they are those little baby babies that like yeah. float around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now uh, it's that was replaced with proper like no now people can properly use the multiplayer. Oh, that's amazing! Like there are, you can select your own characters. Actually, like select the proper characters. Actually, that's cool. I'm still never gonna do it, but that's awesome. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you can. Steam ha Steam has the function to the remote play. Don't care. Try it. Well, we could we could talk about uh, you know binding of Isaac all day long. Uh, and well, we I've I've run out of repentance material, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> There's new challenges, I guess. There's this eight is, new challenges. This is like a. Like this is the year of man, man, new good. Like this and the la like the end of the two twenty twenty was the year of good. Uh, what is it called? Roguelikes, roguelikes. or roguelike? Like, well, and there's also mine, well, there's also the brand new. Uh, there's Hades too, right? L Lupero, Hades is awesome. Hades. I still have Hades to get awesome. Hades. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, for choice. I I like Hades. I I I am shit at it, but I I like it. It's fun. Uh, the characters are very charming. Try Loop Hero. What's that? Loop hero. <laughs> but uh, moving on, I, I I just had to say this because like this is like this is a thing like like I I, I, I you hardly hear somebody say something like this like because it's a very definitive statement. <laughs> but uh uh it, it it comes out that Push Square uh reviewed uh Yuji Naka's new uh game Balan Wonder World and called it dubbed it one of the I think it's Wonder World, um, but I, I could be wrong. Wonder World is like from here. Here's a deep cut: Beverly Hills Cop Three. <laughs> Hold on, uh, we'll, we'll get to the Balan Wonder World. No, it's Balan Wonder World. Oh my god, I can't believe they ripped off of Beverly Hills Cop Three. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's Balan Wonder World. Right. Um, uh, is <laughs> they dubbed it one of the worst 3D platforms of the decade. <laughs> 3D from from what I've heard of people day. who've tried it out, it looked kind of charming. It's just that I saw something with the final boss fight, which and, and this is probably just because it was an early build, but there's like a little bit of glitch where something flickered. But it's like uh, it really runs like even awfully. I was ha like had to look away. <laughs> it was it really it, hurt the eyes. It runs awfully. Uh, Does that, it? That is part of the reason why it's considered okay. so bad. I mean, 
the art is charming just because they it's the same artist as that that worked on nights with him uh sure so like it it, it 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 looks charming of course it does but like it, your game needs to run, man. Um, you know, it, it apparently runs terrible. It's a P. It's a PS5 game, so like, you know, it, it's far too advanced for the constraints of the PS5. It, it shouldn't, it, and it shouldn't run like shit, and it does. Um, so, and apparently, it just isn't designed well. Um, Yuji I, 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 Naka to me um, doesn't have a whole lot of clout. Uh, I, I I think the last great game he made. Honestly, with Sonic Two, um, which is a long, long, long time. Yeah, that's ago. literally the first console game I owned because it came with a console. Exactly. I mean, he. Uh, well, no, and 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 Sonic Three. Uh, so so Sonic Three and Knuckles is probably the last great, truly great game he ever made. Uh, there are Knights into Dreams defenders out there. I've tried it many, 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 many. Yeah, times. I get it, but it's not for me. It it. it I don't. It, it is super easy to beat, and and then after that, you're supposed to just like doing your speed runs and better runs, like and and better scores. But that's not what games were about during the Saturn era. I'm sorry. Yeah, so it was ahead of his time. He's a genius. No, it's more like if you want to make that kind of game, you need to make it for a social setting, like an arcade or you know online multiplayer. Uh, you know online uh, like. You know, what uh, you need is to cool. make Christmas nights into dreams. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> um, so, I mean, after that, he's made Burning Rangers, Sonic Adventure, uh, Choo Choo Rocket was really good. Well, Sonic uh, Adventure's Sonic... a banger, and that game sold the Dreamcast. And, uh, I know it, it hasn't aged very well, but nice. that game is pretty it great. Is... <sighs> a sixth of it is good. Playing as Sonic is good. <laughs> yeah, I like um, playing as the robot. Okay, the robot. But but playing is big. <laughs> Get out of here. Well, no. B- Big's whole campaign is a mini game. Like that's just uh, like the, ta- uh, Tails is a bad version of Sonic's levels. Uh, yeah. Knuckles levels are annoying. Uh, well, uh, I actually Come forgot on. what were Knuckles levels because I remember you have in to Sonic search for 2. the emerald pieces. Oh, it's still the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I I mainly remember Sonic Adventure two because I owned that one first and that was yeah those were unpleasant. <laughs> yeah. So I mean like the the um. With the shadow levels and the Sonic levels are good in so- Sonic Adventure Two, uh, but every uh, and and the robot levels and, and Tails levels, I guess, in that. Yeah, so uh, like four out of the six characters. Four, four out of the six. Okay, uh, but like uh, what I'm trying to say is Sonic Three was all good. Sonic Three and Knuckles was all good. Um, yeah, like, it was it, a banger. It, it, come on. Um, oh, by the way, do you know what the reward is? I'm getting a little tangential here. Do you know what the reward is for? getting every emblem in sonic adventure one uh what is it just like a high five <laughs> no that, that that that's mario sunshine uh <laughs> no you get to play as metal sonic uh, i mean just oh, for cool. just for swag like there's that's nothing to unlock because cool. you've unlocked it but he he's actually faster than sonic but he has worse control with his turning yeah, yeah that, that one's pretty cool um and, t- and so like you know he has producer credits he's not even like a programmer or anything yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. All kinds of games after that, um, which I, I'm sure he was barely involved with. Um, and, like, the, the next time he's, like, really, really super involved in the game is, like, Let's Tap, which, you know, barely anybody played on the, on the heard Wii. Ivy the Kiwi, which was pretty cool, uh, but a hard as shit. Um, and Rodea the Sky Soldier, which is okay, and it's kind of like Knights. Uh, you know, it's like... It, it, he's... To me, he's like an idea man, and yeah, he's into yeah, mechanics, yeah. but he's like doesn't actually have the the chutzpah to get a game together and and make it a, a banger. To me, um, he, he's kind of like KG in a He's like a he's like a really good hype man, but like he himself. He needs more than he needs good programmers around him and, and good. Well, that that was the whole thing with Money Number Nine. He's like, remember Mega Man, but like, but 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 he was the artist though. He wasn't the the exactly. programmer. <laughs> well, like Yuji Naka, I doubt programs a lot anymore, and that's what he was good at. He was good at programming the, well, was the physics the guy, of Sonic. 
was, was he the guy i forgot if it was him was he the guy who was quoted for odira saying not bad for a like a, a knockoff no that was yu suzuki the maker Suzu- of, okay okay my uh, bad that, that's of, so uh, funny <laughs> of, of shenmue um that's and great. uh outrun and all yeah this outrun stuff. is why yeah, you yeah. brought that up yeah that's fantastic yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not bad for a knockoff <laughs> i mean that that is that, a that, that pr- is that's a, pretty I decent take praise, that, yeah. actually, <laughs> yeah. from him. Yeah, the guy who um, made the real thing. He's like, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Um, so moving on from that, uh, this is way, way more exciting and Sega-related. Um, uh, kind of, kind of. What? Uh, it is Sega-related. <laughs> no, I mean, for, for exciting. It's like, oh. the, the implications are exciting. So, uh, Virtual Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown got rated in Korea for PS4. So yeah, um, so like that's not exciting because the game's already existed for years on the PS no, freaking three. This, this is a different game, Lotus. Is it? It's it's not um, it's not Virtual Fighter Five with the expansion. No, that was Final Showdown. This is Ultimate oh, Showdown. Are you this kidding me? Game, really, the, really? Yeah. This is the, title, the titles are that close and they mean the same thing. Well, I mean, where else can you go after final? <laughs> you can go to the another same place, I guess. All right, well, never mind. In that case, I suppose it is exciting, but it's, it's still weird that it's still Virtual Fighter Five, like for the third what? time. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that they want to gauge the interest of the fighting game community in Virtual Fighter before they make an entire, you know, put all their chips in making it an entire new game. Um, which I think is reasonable. Uh, Are they going to add considering... Skullomania? Are they going to add that sword fighter who was going to be in Virtua Fighter but then wasn't uh, and he made yeah. it to Street Fighter EX instead? <laughs> Skullomania doesn't, doesn't fit at all. Bring, but, Skull, uh, br- bring, bring Skullomania. Skullomania is uh, like a character by... Uh, what's the name of that team that made uh, uh, St- Street Fighter EX plus Alpha? Uh, I, I, I don't know. But well, Skullomania yeah. is like a luchador though, right? Or just a wrestler, regular wrestler. I think they're a. Uh, I I think they're just a wrestler. Yeah. Okay, because I was gonna say, Virtual Fighter has a wrestler and a luchador. I think a ruse. Does that sound right? A ruse Street I, Fighter. I don't know. Ex plus Alpha. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I know. Yeah. Just the, Arika, the point is, Arika. we need Skullomania in Virtual Fighter Five. Uh, uh, Arika <laughs> made that and put Skullomania in Fighting EX layer. Um, we we um, we need Robo Akira. Br- invent that. <laughs> I I need uh text, eyes. texture yes. Doral. Uh. <laughs> no, you, you know you know what we need is we need a couple of characters from Dead or Alive Five, but using their original audio from the game they came from. Um, Doral, but with the textures of an actual mom, instead of like being told that it's 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 yeah, instead of mom. being like shiny like oil, <laughs> or instead of being marble or whatever the fuck, like different skin color, like, not skin colors, but skin looks are like different like materials she's made of. It's very bizarre. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how how that became Kage's mom, but you know whatever. Um, and this is a real in in, in one of the Virtual part. Fighter like plot synopses by the way it was one of those like will he won't he when it came to the point where he was going to kill Doral, and he's such a badass that he actually went ahead and did it but then it turned out that wasn't the real Doral. it wasn't so was the like, real oh, Doral. who made a second it was some Dural? other polygons that were just hanging about yeah um, <laughs> but yeah this is this is a brand new uh version of uh virtual fighter 5 which has been around since the ps3 and yeah that was era. like wasn't it like I don't know if it was a launch, launch title, but it was early. Yeah, it was pretty damn early. Um, but like pre- uh, I predated think, trophies, I think. Uh, I I'm pretty sure it was a PS3 launch title. It was not a 360 launch title. Yeah, like um, when I finally bought it, when I got a PS3, I think it was for five dollars. Yeah, I mean, Virtual Fighter Five is one of the best fighters of all time. It just got extremely overlooked at the time. Um, but yeah, the and, fighting... and meanwhile, there was like a literally a floor dedicated to that one game in Japanese arcades. Japan couldn't get enough. Yeah, I uh, what, what I'm saying now is the fighting community is a lot uh, stronger now because of, uh, of the work done during, you know, Street Fighter 4's era. Uh, so it, 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 I, there is enough space for this game to be a big thing if it's, if it's played, if it catches on. So, um, this is a big deal. Uh, I, we've been hoping for a new Virtual Fighter 
experience for a long time, like Virtual Fighter fans. I it is my favorite uh, of the three D fighters, and then then Soul Calibur. After that, I, I like Soul Calibur a lot. Yeah, mine's but, um, probably it's the reverse for me. For me, it's probably Soul Calibur, but Virtual Fighter is very very good. <laughs> I I like it better than DOA. I like it better than Tekken. Um, so I I I think that this this is time for it to shine. Plus. Um, it, it's un- inarguable. No matter what you like, it's inarguable that it's probably the most technical. Um, yeah, it's way up there. Game out there. I think I've mentioned this in the podcast before, but in Virtual Fighter Five, Pi Pi Chan has yep. a move that specifically counters Another literally Pai-chan. one particular move performed by Pi Chan. So yeah, like you can awesome. only do it if it's a mirror match, and your mirror does that one thing. It's it's like in Tobal number one, the the not Goku character has a move where he can grab like, you know, grab Bowser by the tail and swing him and throw him, but you can only do that on the one character in the game that has a tail. So it's just this very, like specific thing to do. <laughs> That's really hilarious. Well, um, looking forward to an official announcement about that uh, to come to the uh, West, and it will. Uh, so um, moving on from that, uh, uh, we have. Disco Elysium, the final cut, is finally out. Um, so this is a really big deal. It's been getting, like, insanely good reviews. Uh, so uh, I am really excited to to play it. So I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm on cloud nine to, to start playing this game because I had heard for a while that they wanted to make a final cut version of it with extra... Um, with extra content and i know they're putting out a switch version but i still may play this on pc just because it's, it's one of those like you know overhead clicky RPGs. yeah those like Baldur's gate looking rpg yeah and... exactly it just feels at home you know like like a planescape torment kind of deal so yeah same um, same idea yeah 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 exactly um so yeah disco elysium uh i am really looking forward to it it i mean it's a pretty good bargain right now it's like 31.99 for one of the supposedly one of the best rpgs of all time um and a better version at that so um people are really really loving it and i think this is finally coming to um like switch pretty soon too so uh, i'm i'm excited and i i i'm i'm i figure this is the time to jump on because i you know it's the final cut uh so um i i can finally you know i usually wait until like all of DLC or out because I don't go back to a game after <laughs> after I've been done yeah, with it. Yeah, it's the whole like, thing. To this day, yeah. I've never played the Bioshock 2, like, Minerva's Neither Den stuff, and I hear it's, like, some of the best parts of the game, but... Oh, no, no, but Minerva, uh, Minerva's Den was the, infinite? The, Whatever. I still haven't played it. <laughs> no, Minerva's, Minerva's Den is Bioshock 2. I did play that. Um, oh, but I, Burial at Sea, then. Well, I haven't played I, that. I haven't played Burial at Sea, yeah. which is supposed to be the best part of Infinite. I know. Entry College is what yeah. we're saying? I uh, just wanted to say that Minerva's Den is not that excellent like it's okay yeah sorry i, I, I was thinking yeah my, that, that's more, my fault i was thinking burial of sea it's just more bioshock 2 yeah yeah i liked Minerva's then i thought it was great but um mm, it was all right i, I was just not, it wasn't say like oh it's groundbreaking yeah well um moving on from that uh i i this game recently came out on march uh 26th uh so we we missed it last week but I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, it Takes Two, uh, which is made by the developer of A Way Out, which was a um, pretty popular co-op um, action game where uh, like two brothers are trying to uh, break out of uh, prison together, and like it's a co-op experience. You and another player help each other um, get through puzzles. Yeah, it's cleverly so they handled. It- yeah, they made a new game, you know, cookie and cream style, right? As as they say. <laughs> I, I hope <laughs> not, because that game is fucking hard. <laughs> um, but it it takes two uh, centers around a uh, two dolls that represent a girl's um, divorcing parents and um, them trying to repair their relationship in doll form as like huh. tiny people um, getting through um, like the hazards of being small things in a big big house, you know. Um, I mm-hmm. bought this, uh, specifically so I could play with my wife, um, because she doesn't play a lot of video games. She plays, you know, the, uh, she played a lot of Animal Crossing when that was out, but like that, that we don't, we don't play a lot of games together. Um, you know, we kind of like watch each other play and, um, 
It's true. I, 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 hey, I, I, I know, but game. like, hey, wife, I got the perfect game for us to play. It's about people struggling with their marriage. <laughs> no, but the... <laughs> The the point is this game. I mean, I I know I know I I I I know what you mean. It's just like this, just an amusing, yeah, thing to bring up for that particular. It, it has like, a relatable let, let's premise. Let's play the though. desperately try not to divorce game. <laughs> yeah, but my 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 point is that this is a relatable uh a relatable sure, story. Sure, sure. All right. Yeah. So yeah, this yeah. is a re- re- relatable story in, and it's a game that is is casual enough that it doesn't like require you uh it doesn't give you gigantic setbacks when you mess up um you, you know and, what by the way you, you ever you ever show our snipper clips you might like that yeah yeah we we i've actually thought about doing that but i think that you would be more engaged with this because it has a story um yeah so, um but we we played through the to the first boss and we had a lot of fun it's a giant vacuum cleaner um well that sucks <laughs> it does. hey <laughs> But uh, yeah, we we were really enjoying ourselves, and we had like a really good date night just playing It Takes Two. So I, I I was I was really enjoying it. It's gotten really good reviews, uh, and it's been getting advertised pretty heavily. So I was like, ah, you know what? I I heard um their previous game, A Way Out, was really good. Um, uh, yeah, so like, I, like, I, I, to I don't know how much out. I would care to play the game in general. Like it looked like. Okay, this is clever. I'm working with somebody, but I, I will say the the way it built up to the end and the way it executed the end, that was legitimately clever. And I I don't think I've ever seen that in a game before. Yeah, and um, this this the the same team also before that made Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. So um, I'm starting to detect a theme here. Yeah. Which is yeah another co-op. I was about story to ask game. that like. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, does that game fit in here somewhere? Oh, it does. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I was excited to play this one because, it, it, I, to me, the, the theme was the most accessible one. Uh, you know, for for you know, it's cute, um, and you know, it has like interesting characters. Like the the vacuum cleaner is like you know very cartoony and kind of fun to fight. Um, sure. And we, we had a good time. Uh, just being like, oh, go over here, go over there, you know, that kind of thing, and, and, and do this, and I'll do that, and, you know, the t- do, do the timings of all the puzzles, and we had, we had a really good time playing it, so I, I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, next one is um, Limited Run Games kind of came out of nowhere uh, with um, this uh, announcement. They, they are putting out a collection uh, the the doom collection that's with, with doom uh, one two and three bfg edition uh so uh, on out on consoles physically and um you can get it for ps4 or switch but they also have a various levels of um limited and collector's editions but i i just thought this was particularly cool and notable because the um i've always really loved the box art with doom and yeah. I, I really I, wanted, I really like Doom 2s. I, I like Doom 1 and Doom 2s. But uh, Doom Doom 2 is like... Uh, Doom, Doom, Doom 1, I just love that, like, climbing well, out Doom, of this mass of imps, you know? Yeah, Doom Doom 1 is more iconic. But Doom 2, yeah. that Cyber Demon, when you, when you saw that on the that's store cool. shelf, you're like, what is this? They're they're all really cool. Well, uh, they're both well, really in cool. Doom 2, you would know already what a Cyber Demon is <laughs> if you played the Doom 1. Oh, you know what? That's a good point, but... I only ever played Doom One shareware, so I actually did not know. <laughs> get the uh, yeah, you didn't get that. Yeah, but that, that's a, that's enough. a good point, though. Yeah, you should have known, but I didn't. <laughs> so uh, what what I thought was really cool about this is I you you know that uh, like a couple uh, a couple uh, conventions you know past conventions I've been thinking about getting you know original boxes of Doom and Doom Two, and because I love their box art, but. They've gotten so fucking expensive lately, just because they're they're highly collectible now, and especially Doom One wasn't sold in stores. You had to send away for it, so that's like yeah, like super yeah. Doom One was right? never yeah publicly well, well like yeah readily available in retailers uh, in a retail space. It's like the shareware disk you could buy if you were, if you didn't have the internet, right? Um, but like it, which you didn't because it was nineteen ninety like what three? Yeah. Exactly, but uh, so like I. I thought to myself, you know, the real reason why I want this is because I like the art, not necessarily because I want the actual discs and all that stuff. So yeah, I have no uh, interest playing classic Doom on console. 
Yeah. Uh, well, I, I just thought that, that it was neat that they are including posters of and, and clean versions of them, you know, without UPCs and, yep. and uh, you know, announcements and stuff like that. Of Doom 1, 2, and 3, uh, they're 9 by 6 art prints. Uh, nine nine inches by six inches. Uh, so they're they're pretty classy looking. They're not huge, but they're pretty classy. And uh, the the steel book case it looks like uh, what uh, like final dooms. Um, no, F- final final doom looks pretty industrial. No, that's master level. Uh, level yeah, it was, it was like the the master collection or something. Yeah. It was like it was like an an edition of Doom One or something like that. It, it's I don't Doom know. Two. It's Doom Two. Doom Two. Uh, but master, yeah, it looks levels. The, the steel book is pretty sexy. Um, and uh, I got I got the permission from the wife to put, to put all three posters up. So uh, she likes it. Actually, Doom Three is the best, which is <laughs> was just actually kind of funny. I was like, look, you you put these up, and she's like, oh, I like Doom Three, and I was like, that's the one I least like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doom Three is like it's not bad, but eh. Sp- speaking of Doom Three, by the way, I actually picked up uh, Doom Three uh, VR because it was only twenty bucks, and oh, there's a eight. physical version, and it comes with uh, the expansion, the lost levels, and everything. Ooh, nice! I need to I need to pick that up too. Um, where where'd you pick that up? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I think it's a GameStop exclusive. Oh well, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to track that down. You're probably gonna um, have to order it online. I think it's one of yeah. those cases where each store got like one, and one, yeah. they were bought. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, in this classic collection uh, edition, it comes with uh, the reprint of the '96 uh, Doom comic, the Rip. Yeah, and tear Rip and comic. Tear. Yeah. Now I'm radioactive. Um, that can't be good. <laughs> uh, it comes with a, a keychain, which I don't care about. A, yeah. a, ah, a chainsaw. A communicator. Yes. Six, <laughs> a, a six gig uh usb floppy disk that looks like the shareware which i don't care about um and yeah a, a that, rip- that's the reason i didn't buy the collector's edition like it's expensive yeah. because it's full of a bunch what? of knickknacks that i don't want i want it for the posters um i i, I keychain that is not the one of the key cards i don't get it why they didn't make that no, and, and yet they did a have a key replica card. key card yeah, it does come with a key card <laughs> yeah but it's not the keychain it seems like a little on the nose but they didn't it's the dude or USB, yeah some sort of useful like a usb yeah port. the key card yeah the key card is like a prop like what are you gonna do with it yeah i don't know but uh i'm ex- i'm excited for all the all the tchotchkes and uh, I'm getting the Switch version because I don't have a portable version of Doom, and it's all fixed up now, uh, as opposed to its launch. So um, I'm I'm excited to play it. I mean, uh, Doom Doom One and Two are a lot of fun, even on the go, because they're kind of pick up and play kind of games. So I can't believe um, Metallica really... ripped off of the level one theme in Doom. <laughs> Pantera uh, 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 ripped uh, uh, off of uh, Doom Doom One, but uh, yeah. I just wanted to throw that out there because I was excited. I was like, "Oh, they're finally releasing official versions of the the posters," uh, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, but uh, yeah, this next one is all all on you, uh, Lotus. I think. You, yeah, you I, I don't have much to say about this, but there was a lot of hype behind this release. Uh, Fantasian. It's like Fantasia, the Disney movie, but with an N at the end. Fantasian. <laughs> And it, it looks kind of like a Final Fantasy game, and I think it was designed by Sakaguchi, the Final Fantasy guy. But this is like the next not Final Fantasy RPG. Some of the ca- like one of the the, the male Hironobu character looks Sakaguchi. like he's out of Nier Automata, but like hmm? what did you say? It's Horonobu uh, Sakaguchi and music by none other than Nobu Yeah, Nobuo Uematsu. Yeah, so like it, it it's it's Final Fantasy like I guess in everything but the name. Uh but it's only on Apple TV, Beautiful so too. that's <laughs> like I can't wait for them to Port it, port it to something else. To <laughs> literally anything else. Yeah, but um, but the people who have played it said they quite like it. And apparently, I think it's going to be released in two halves, which means it was bigger than people thought it would be. But it's just, look at this. We, we, we have another Final Fantasy game. It's not called Final Fantasy, but we know. you know, It's, it's like one of those. It, it's notable for kind of having realistic-looking backgrounds, but with a fan, uh, fantasy characters displayed in front of it. Uh, yeah. So it has a really neat-looking aesthetic. Um I think that's really cool mm-hmm. looking. Um, moving on from that, oh, I, I'm going to let you go through most of these because uh, I missed uh, several of them, but yeah, I, I, I think you were really excited about one in particular. And well, I yeah, the, the last Corrective that. Consciousness uh, happened to be recorded on April Fool's Day. We did not do an April Fool's thing, but no. we encountered April Fool's jokes. Dracologist, did you encounter any? 
I encountered the Bloodbone card. Okay, Blood yeah. Card that was thing. the big one that I found. I'll, I'll get to that one. Did you happen to see any others? Because I only saw a couple that other people mentioned. Those were the big uh, ones. Let me think. Alright, because like there was uh, there was like Not a demo really. for you know that new. Oh oh yeah. There was one thing, but it wasn't a game. It was uh, New Blood. You know the the publisher who released a lot of sh the, like released Dusk, uh, yeah, Ultra yeah, Kill and such. Uh, they basically replay for the time being. They replaced all the Steam cover Steam uh, game covers with the doodles of the Dusk developer's daughter. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. Just like, this so, isn't what I, I've signed up for. Um, you have, you have like, it is adorable little, like, red on black doodles by a little girl, so... Sure, sure, sure. Enjoy. Yeah, this is this is our high-quality uh, art that we pay people to, to put up. But um, I saw three things. One of them was, uh, for, if you know that newish game, Control, by Remedy Entertainment. Yeah. Uh, they they released a demo of what looked like some kind of demake, like it was on some sort of, like almost ps1 console sort of the graphics looked all jank and it just looked kind of funny um one thing i honestly if you would if you think about it control would make an excellent like resident Evil style game like with fixed camera angles. probably yeah it would um one thing i saw that was pretty funny was a trailer for near replicant and it's like like it, it was a legit trailer but it was intentionally misleading because it showed the other parts of near like, it, it had slow music playing, and it showed you fishing, and planting your flowers and vegetables in your garden, and riding on the pig on the fields, and it advertised Nier as a, uh, like, a slow life game, like, like Harvest Moon or something. It was pretty funny, because those were all actual things you could do in the game, but man, that is not the point. <laughs> so that was, that was pretty uh, entertaining as well. And, uh, but yeah, the big one that Jake Hall just already mentioned was, um, there are these people that have been working on making a Bloodborne demake for PS1, which I'm I'm so excited about. I can't wait for them to release it. But for their April Fool's gag, they released Bloodborne Cart, where you're just different characters, including some of the enemies, just riding like Mario Kart carts, and you're racing. And like they had like Thumerian Cup which just slayed me. You're doing laps driving through Yarnum, and they're playing like a MIDI version of the Cleric Beast's boss theme, but in major key. <laughs> so you have that like, da na 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 as you're riding <laughs> these cards. was the funniest shit. <laughs> and um, a lot of people were like, oh my god, please make this real. Like, please have this actually be real. And I think they said they actually would make it like, like a side game when it finally released. But that, I thought that was... The greatest thing. Loading, <laughs> just, that's so loading screen game. Um, so I, I, I saw a few. Um, uh, this is Nintendo Life's uh, list, and I thought these were pretty funny. So one of them was like, uh, uh, you could you could become Dragon Lord from Dragon Quest. Like, if Square Enix put this out, and he just has this big, gigantic like horn thing that you can put on your head and buy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and and it's like, no, this is. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, I think didn't Animal Crossing have like an Easter egg thing, or was that last year, yeah. where they just got inundated yeah. with eggs and people actually got mad because they couldn't get anything else? <laughs> I don't, I don't know if they did anything this year. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Part-time UFO, which I've mentioned in the past, uh, <laughs> did this thing where they 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 have like the part-time UFO characters looking like like sexy sexy model dudes. <laughs> like for some reason because they're supposed to be cute little ufos it's sure, sure. funny that they have like so you know Anaki. dating sim <laughs> I, I wish dude uh let me see another one was oh you'll like this one lotus uh the little nightmares devs um <laughs> um have uh, said that they were releasing uh <laughs> cooking mono uh, which is like the main character? Yeah, Mono, uh, the, like the uh, the guy Mono. in Little Nightmares Two. Yeah, uh, that's he, so stupid. It, it, he is a competition for the new uh, for for uh, uh, for Cooking Mama is what they're saying. Uh, you know, oh, okay, so yeah, M move over, Cooking Mama. Dance. So one of the funny things they have this picture with Mono uh, with with a gigantic ladle because he's small <laughs> and he's trying. Try oh, to that's drag great! Drag it around, drag it around the <laughs> kitchen. Like, that's fantastic. 
it's so stupid. <laughs> um, <laughs> Forest of Illusion, this this one's really, really pretty good. Uh, they're like, oh, we, we finally found the long-lost Super Mario RPG 2. <laughs> it's like, no, you didn't. Paper Mario <laughs> 1? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just, like, funny stuff like that. The, the, sure, like, sure. The best, best ones, but... As always, April Fools to me shouldn't be something that anybody actually wants. It should be so stupid and outlandish that like. Yeah, I just wanted to say like, yeah. Yeah. oh, a new paper ma- paper Mario game that is actually good. Like, no, uh, like I can hear the crumpling of the hearts. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. We, I, I don't want um, you know, <laughs> things that like tear at my heartstrings. I want to just laugh at, at, at how stupid the thing that you're you're teasing me with is. Oh, actually, by the way, what one thing I just remembered is Limited Run Games did a release on April 1st that actually was legit, but it was only for the one day where it was, uh, for, for the PS4, it was just a collection of three sort of, like, mini-games that were just dumb. Like, one of them was about you being, like, like a jar of mayonnaise oh, yeah. or something. Like yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're real games, but it's like, what the fuck? Like, 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 this is not an April Fool's joke. Like, I mean, it, it is, but we're actually selling it for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they went forward and... Yeah, it was like man, it was like mostly about mayo. Or like two of the games were about. Mayo, yeah, there were like right? three things, and that was one of them. But I don't remember what the others were. But they, like they look like just goofy little indie stupid. things. Yeah, stupid stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wait, here we go. Yeah, Green Lava Studios. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Volume one. Uh, let me see. The games are. My name is Mayo. My name there is go. Mayo there Two go. and Mister Masaji. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it sold out real quick. Um, <laughs> so move, moving on from that, um, let's see here. Oh, so last year, Platinum one of Platinum Games's like April Fool's jokes was that they were going to release a, a, a sequel to the Cresta series, like the Terra Cresta series, like out of nowhere. Like it's it, so like it was a game called Soul Cresta, and they revealed no, it's actually real. Like, they're actually putting it out. It's, so, it's not an yeah. April Fool's game. But that, that's like Yakuza Like a Dragon. It felt like an April Fool's gag when they were like, what if Yakuza played, like, turn-based combat and then it was real and, like, game of the year? <laughs> yeah, that's that's really awesome. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And obviously that's a, a, a much smaller uh, project for them than, the, you know, because it's, it's going to be a 2D shmup um, that, that's very, like, old-school arcade-y. Uh, so I, I'm just, I just thought that was really cool. And mm. moving on from this, this was really awesome, um, and and just recently, this was really out of nowhere. Um, Matt Phillips, one of the developers of Homefront: The Revolution, uh, which is the second Homefront game, revealed that he hid an entire 4K remaster of Time Splitters <laughs> 2, one of the most beloved games of all time, uh, like cult cult beloved games of all time, that hasn't gotten an update. Uh, like the best version of it. You Play is what the original Xbox version. Um, Time Splitters Two is hiding in every copy of Homefront: The Revolution. <laughs> but like um, only the arcade machine, though. I think I don't think yeah. like your home copy of it can do it. No, your your home home copy. Uh, I think. Can they actually? I thought he mentioned it was like in the arcade machines. In the game, there's an arcade machine in the game that you have to find. I think. I, that, I'm gonna have to I look that up, but like I remember his tweet was like a picture of an actual arcade cabinet. Oh, I I didn't know there was a arcade version of Homefront. Yeah, unless I'm the one who misinterpreted it, maybe I am. The Revolution. I I don't think there's an arcade version of that. Um, yeah, maybe not then. Maybe not. I'll have to I'll have to look into it. Yeah, I no, it's only for Windows, X, uh, PlayStation Four, and Xbox One. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I I don't uh, I think it. You have to find maybe I was just looking at an in shot. Maybe I was looking at an in-game capture. Oh yeah, I was. Okay, the arc. Okay, okay, the arcade machine is in-game. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So you have to find it. Um, yeah, because I, I misread his tweet because it says it's hidden in this arcade machine in Homefronts. I, I guess I thought he meant it was an arcade machine of Homefronts. So whoops, yeah. there we go. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, he he hid an entire like 4K upscale version. I think this is the only PC version of the game. Uh, of Time Splitters 2 um, that it has ever existed too because uh, you know if you got the PC version uh, I 
think this is the first time you've ever had access to it. Um, yeah. So it's the first time it might just be it might just be the first couple of levels. It's not like I don't think it's the entire game necessarily. Oh really? Is that what it is that what it said? Um, well at 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 any rate, really cool, <laughs> and it it's mm-hmm. ne- kind of neat that it hadn't been discovered. <laughs> yeah, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, I I bought the game so I could figure it out um, and and find it. I bought I bought the PC version because I I thought that was <laughs> you bought home from the revolution for times later. Yeah, it's like buying Yakuza Kiwami two for I mean, virtual on. <laughs> I would I I would do that. You know I would, <laughs> but I didn't. Uh, luckily, I want I want to play both, but I would. Um, so moving on from that, uh, this was pretty neat. So um, Metroid Prime is. It's been known that somebody's been working on a 2D uh, like demake of of Metroid Prime uh, for a, for a while now, but there's actually a playable demo now. Yeah, and everybody was like, "Quick, download this before it gets a C and D." Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, before Nintendo gets out the it, giant it, 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 or we talk in and out. Yeah, yeah, uh, no kidding, because um, uh, AM2R uh, might be one of my favorite like metroid games and it, it, it's it's a shame that it's not an official product because it, it was that good yeah um, but you know and nintendo instead of supporting these people you just get out the crystal and nope yep 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 so nope. um moving on from that uh this was really cool news uh so yeah i heard a, about this one yeah a a long awaited uh, English fan translation for a PS- PlayStation One game called Mizerna Falls, which is kind of has a, a Twin Peaks uh, slash Silent Hill uh, feel to it. Uh, yeah, it, has, it, it looks kind of Silent Hill ish. Yeah, and uh, almost like a Deadly Premonition kind of game. Um, it has like an open world kind of thing to it, but it, it, it's been long one, uh, long been a a a horror fans uh, dream to be able to play this in a, in English and it's finally out. Mm-hmm. I am super excited. I want to play this, so I will be uh, busting out my uh, my my optical drive emulator to play this at some point. I, I really am excited for it. Um, moving on from that and similar news, uh, there was a serial experiments lane uh, that that was a, um, a popular anime um, yeah. in in the early two thousands. Was it? I don't know um, when, but yes. Um, for PlayStation One, that that had come out only in Japan, and somebody made an English fan translation of that as well. But this time they made it web based, so you could go play the game, um, just like, you know, like in in a browser, uh, in browser, um, and they made it open sourced. Uh, so. It, it's kind of weird that you can't play it on uh, on original hardware, uh, which is the norm. Uh, but it's kind of neat that they're they're experimenting with a uh, a web based interface for this kind of thing. So I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, far as I know, that like that whole story is kind of web related, so it kind oh, of oh, it fits. It fits the theme. Yes, like hold on. Yeah, so... Uh, communication and isolation, stuff like that, like, related to, uh, basically, through internet com- communication. I see, I see. I think. Oh, well, I, I, I thought that was really awesome, uh, and I thought it was a, a neat way to um, allow people to play it, considering that, like, I didn't know, like, you could have a web-based uh, PlayStation 1 emulator uh, that worked. Uh, so, like, I, I thought that was really neat. And it also um, allows people to um, access it very easily without, um, like, gatekeeping and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know any anything about it other than that. Um, also, I, I have been putting out um, Mr. News uh, on the FPGA-based uh, project out there. Um, and Hotego has been working on uh, his cps2 releases of all those wonderful capcom games from that era but he uh put out a surprise beta for his patreon subscribers of the original shinobi um which is a sega system um system 16 game so um that also teases that you 
will be working on other Sega 16, uh, System 16 games, which is phenomenal. I mean, um, the original Shinobi is a big deal. Uh, it is one of the foundational games that made, um, you know, Sega a popular <clears throat> arcade company. Um, it, it's not one of their earliest games, but it's certainly one of their early big hits. Uh, I can, uh, Zaxxon before that would be a hit from the era before that, but after that, um, this really sub, uh, like made, this was a game that you wanted to play on the the Master System, for instance. Were you going to say cemented? Like Probably. it's cemented, it's like the Master System into... I don't know, public consciousness or what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a really big deal that he's working on on that uh, that one in particular, and um, he's just been doing fantastic work by adding more and more arcade cores to the Mister Project, and they're they're super accurate, and you can play with Marilyn Monroe's face in it, which is <laughs> also uh, pretty great because it's usually. Um, uh, censored out, so um, because you know, it, uh, and also Spider Man is usually censored out. Like a parody of Spider Man is always in in in, in, in Shinobi One, uh, which they didn't learn from in the second game. <laughs> in the Return of Shinobi, there is also a parody a of Spider Man. Revenge of a Revenge of Shinobi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let let's see if the other Sega System sixteen games. Let's see here. Uh, I I, I want to just put out what I I, I think, like I I just want to put out what what some of the the big games are. Like Alien Syndrome. That was a or no, that was pre sixteen. So Shinobi's like the big one, but the the Alex Kid game in the arcade. Is a Sega sixteen um, system sixteen game? Alien Syndrome is yeah. There we go. Um, let me see. E SWAT Alien Syndrome is the top down one, right? With the growth and easy bosses. Mm. Uh, e SWAT, uh, Golden Axe. Uh, the these are all like big ones from that era. Cotton is another one. Wonder Boy three. Uh, the Sega version of Tetris, which, which is pretty famous. Uh, Altered Beast is is a Sega si- si- System 16 game. Um, the Amiga people are going to be mad about that. What, Altered Beast? <laughs> yeah, the, it's their favorite game. <laughs> it's nobody's favorite game, but it, it's still great. <laughs> oh, we're all... <laughs> but it's Lotus's favorite game, I know that, right? By far. <laughs> and uh, we have a few items from, from you as well, uh, uh, yeah, here. so uh, a couple of seasons of things that I watch ended. Um, Attack on Titan's first half of the final season ended last week, but it was Don't after we that. recorded the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting really sick of this half season bullshit, but um, it's, man, that, that show is always rough. stressful to watch, and season four is no exception. Things are building up and building up, and I get the feeling this entire first half of the season has been a powder keg. And the second half of this, well, season is like the, it's just gonna be just nuts. Uh, I'm waiting to see the uh, just the the hat drop. It's it's gonna be freaking crazy. Uh, also, Ruby's season eight has ended. I guess technically it ended last week for people who have the subscription to Rooster Teeth, but publicly this week. And uh, th- this was a uh, something where I was kind of suspecting it was gonna be the final season because. The super big bad is getting involved, and again, there's this big buildup of this super fight. But the way it ended, no, there's definitely got to be more where this came from. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll, I'll see where they finally go with it. Um, this next bit, though, is I think from you. This is nothing that I really follow, but apparently Netflix purchased the rights to two Knives Out sequels. Yeah. I haven't even seen the first one. The first one is very fun and charming. It kind of has like a, uh, like almost like an Agatha Christie esque conceit, but it's kind of a parody of that kind of thing, and and the modern version of it. Daniel Craig is like you know almost like Perot from the you know the Agatha yeah. Christie kind of stuff, but he's um, really goofy. Uh, like at first you think he's like going to be like this 
master mastermind, but he he's really just kind of stumbling and bumbling into everything, and his um his accent constantly changes, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, so like like he's obviously faking whatever he's doing, um, mm. which is really funny. Um, uh, but I I suspect that the sequels will uh um will uh just feature him i don't think it will have any of the characters from the first movie because like it'll probably be a new murder each time uh, sure. i imagine new a new situation <laughs> but i i just thought this was really cool because uh, i really liked knives out i liked the cast um the cast was really cool jamie lee curtis was in it um uh, don johnson and a, a few other um uh, notable people but uh you know daniel craig was really particularly good in it and i i thought that it was really well put together kind of a redemption for ryan johnson um because you know people hated him for for his star wars work so um mm-hmm. uh this was like th- this did really well uh it was like a surprising uh surprisingly good movie and i just thought two sequels so that that's pretty neat and they're both going to be on netflix so i, I just thought, I thought that was a, a neat thing um, but um, looking forward to whatever, uh, and also one of the last Christopher Plummer movies, I think. Um, does that sound right? Because Christopher Plummer passed. I wouldn't know. Movie. Yeah, but um, hey, yeah. So I, I think this is uh, a, a, just a cool time for it. All right, and then I have uh, just three more things to bring up. One of them is that Rick and Morty season five is going to start on June twentieth. I'm excited. Uh, I always like watching that show, but it's uh-huh. like Venture Brothers. You never know when it's going to come back, so finally we got a date. Well, I, I, unlike <laughs> Venture Brothers, it's not canceled. <laughs> yeah. But let's take one of the, the really good shows we have and just cancel it. Uh, and then two more things to bring up. One of them is weird. Uh, you know the, the video game Inside, sure. made by the people who did Limbo? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, you remember we may have... Or you may remember we talked about a long time ago the... Um, what was it? I want to say I am eight bit. I think did a, a collector's edition. Oh yeah, with the real doll kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Well, <laughs> guess what? Uh, I I have some stupid news for you. Uh, <laughs> there was apparently an ARG uh, for this thing, uh, where your collector edition came with a little thing with a sticker on it that had three numbers on it. And apparently that's part of, like, a string of digits. And, like, we need all 500 sets of three numbers. Like Who held on to that sticker? Or like, this thing came out, like, what, like a year ago? Like yeah. Or would like, you know about this? Like, ARGs yeah. only work if they're not, like, stupid and you throw out the clue because it looks like garbage. So I don't know how they're going to make this work if they make it work. Because there's no way that everybody held on to the little sticker. I, I yeah. don't know. That... What do you really, really? Um, and the only other thing I'll bring up is that uh, at the time of this recording, we're doing this on Sunday night. Uh, the previous night, Saturday going into Sunday, there was a, a live stream of like something about JoJo, and everybody was pretty sure they knew where it was going. But there was a whole lot of interviewing. They had all five JoJo voice actors, like parts one through five. They had the voice actors for Jonathan, Joseph, Jotaro, Josuke, and Jonlo. And they're just doing Q&As about like their experience and little funny anecdotes and stuff like that. But everybody was expecting them to wrap up with this, and they did. Uh, JoJo Part 6 anime is confirmed. We all kind of assumed it would be, but now it's official. JoJo Part 6 is coming. I don't think we even have a release date, but I'm excited. Part 6 is kind of divisive, but I I, I quite enjoyed it. I get why people might not like it as much, though, because it's mostly localized in one general area, and it's It's very Monster of the Week again. Hmm? It's the Prism one, right? Yes, and it's very Monster of the Week until... A point, but it feels like they're kind of like regressing. I mean, four, but I, I, I like very where... monster of the week in the beginning of it too. I mean, yeah, I just said that. Uh, but like, it's 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 a. Uh, I found the story to be engaging, and Jolene is one of my favorite uh, Joe stars, like along with Young Joseph. So like, I'm I'm quite excited to see it I when it finally Joseph. comes out. Young Joseph mm-hmm. is so good. Uh, Young Joseph is just having so much fun. Josuke is also very like. I, I love his earnestness. Giorno's a little a little more like serious business, like we gotta get this done. 
Jotaro is probably my least favorite Jojo. He's just like, too stoic. Yeah. yeah, like he seems bored by his own series. And Jonathan, he's passionate, but he's very like, I'll fight for justice. And you're like, yeah. all right, all right. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a little yeah. too, like, Superman y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. a little, a little too much. Jolene's a lot of fun, um, so I, I, I look forward to when they air it. Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. All right. Uh, anything else uh, for the good of the order? Uh, I, I think that's it. Okay. A- anything else on your end, the ecologist? Uh, I basically bought bought myself Angerfoot, foot, and I've been playing mass, uh, mass builder, a lot. Oh, uh, what's that? Mass Builder. It's... Well, do you know the concept of Gunpla? No. Uh, Gundam Plastic. It's basically like modeling for uh, Japanese with Gundam units. Basically, you can make incredibly well-detailed uh, mechas. Hmm. And this game is pretty much that. You basically build your own robots and you can take it out by giant monsters. Oh, that sounds such. like fun. I, I like that kind of thing. The customization level is absolutely bonkers. And recently they've been, not, other than I think, like, uh, they've been saying that the next update will be co- even more customization options. So, that. Yeah. Oh. The only downside of this game right now is that it is really doesn't like my PC right now. It's kind of a resource hog. Well, didn't they um, also do a um, like a a version a new version of Ultra Kill? Um, did they announce that? Uh, I didn't get any updates for it, nor for Proteus. Uh, n- I'm waiting for those. Yeah, but uh, this this one you have like a chainsaw leg in it or something like that. It looked pretty bitchin'. Uh, I, I I need to find something on that. Um, it was. Mm-hmm. I know that there is an upcoming like uh, basically episode two for Ultra Kill because they're releasing it like portionally. Like if it was would be a new demo game and you like you bought the shareware and now you're getting the extra episodes. Yeah, I need I need a. Look that up, but I, you know, of course, we're at we're ending. We we got to end our show here. So, um, but I, I just mm-hmm. thought it was a pretty neat. I'll, I'll I'll have to look into that so we we can talk about that at a later date. But um, yeah, and I, I just remembered. I'll only mention one more super quick thing regarding April Fools. Uh, I did one of my own where I mentioned I was finally gonna play uh a remake of Resident Evil Two, and I did, and it was uh part of the Gamecom game. <laughs> and a lot of people were legitimately fooled by it. I was like, I'm going to explore the police station in the remake of Resident Evil 2. And, and I did. And nobody was happy. <laughs> <laughs> Not even you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, actually, I got a pretty positive response on the video, but everyone was like, oh, god damn it. <laughs> it <was laughs> you got us. You got us, Lotus. You got yeah, us. I mean, like, who saw that coming? The fucking Gamecom? Like, but you forgot that existed. <laughs> oh, the game is Turbo Overkill. I'm sorry. Uh, Turbo Overkill is the game I'm talking about. Um, that that's is not the same, I think. What's that? That's not the same, I think. Yeah, it isn't, but it, it looks pretty neat. It has, uh, some, like, parkour stuff going on in it, and some cyberpunky stuff, and you have a chainsaw leg, which is pretty awesome. Yay. how quirky. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, we, we gotta get going here. Uh, that's the show for this week. Please remember to subscribe to Corrective Consciousness YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While there, please give us thumbs ups, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. It helps promote and spread awareness of the show and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Thursday for a sister podcast, Corrective Consciousness, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. We're going to be, uh, as promised, talking about a few games that you will be missing once the um, the P- PlayStation stores close for uh, PS3, uh, PSP, and PS Vita. Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bolt on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, Twitter, where el- wherever else uh, Vise the Bolts are found. <laughs> And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games to be the Let's Play, which, by the way, I just recently started uploading Obscure on PS2, or getting in conversations with me on the patrons on Discord. 
uh, please consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprints. Sounds good. And you can find me on Skype, Discord, and Steam under the name Dracologist. And you can find me on Twitch under Doc under slash Dracologist. Well, who's this new guy who just showed uh, up when we were leaving? <laughs> I don't know. Grandpa Southern Lucuzzi shuffled in. Yeah. That was really weird. He's one of <laughs> That was like the weirdest one Southern Read like, your own I damn lines, Dracologist. <laughs> Yeah, he's from. He, he secretly is from Texas. He's a hung, Hungarian Texan. <laughs> no. Very, very good. Very good. Very good. And lastly, you fool. Warren is dead. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, we will catch everybody on Thursday then. Until next time, everyone. Bye bye. Good night. <laughs>